The very last thing that I want to introduce is um, something important, and that is how we build in exposure when we're deriving a maximum likelihood estimate. And um, this, is, this is really relevant because this is something you're going to do a lot and you're also going to be confronted with a lot of times when you're working with insurance uh, data. So what we see here is we get the following table, which lists per year how many claims we observed on a series of, of contracts, a group of contracts. And we also see what was the exposure to risk during, uh, during this particular year. And you see these exposures changing over, over time. And that's, that's very typical because in an insurance contract, here you look at a group of policies, the size of that group will change over the years, right? You will lose contracts to competitors. You will attract new contra contracts entering the group. So somehow you need to take that, that, that measure, that exposure to risk into, into account when you're building a model. Because registering here 207 claims, yeah, you really should compare that number of claims against the exposure that you were facing in that particular year. Because if you observe 207 claims on a total exposure expressed in years here of 2,145, then that would be a different observation than when you would have 207 claims on a total exposure of 3,872 years, for example, right? So we really need to look at these uh, reported claims in relation to the exposure that we were, that we were facing. And here it is described at, at group level. Uh, so that means that here we look at a bunch of contracts and we've got six observations in total here that we want to use to, to calibrate our model on. But in general, if you go for um, um, individual policies that you follow over time, think about motor insurance policies, then you could say, okay, uh, Katrien was covered by this insurance product during a full year. She re registered zero claims, right? Uh, but there again, you may see other clients than in the portfolio who were not followed during a full year, perhaps because they sold, they, they canceled their contract in the middle of the year, or they only joined your insurance company after three months or something. So you really need to take that fraction of the year during which your client was covered by that particular contract. You need to take that into account when you're building a model, a probabilistic model for the number of claims reported. And that's what what I want to do right now. So how can we equip our likelihood, in this case for the Poisson, how can we equip our likelihood such that it takes this exposure into account, right? So let's see how um, we're going to do that. And let's do that on the, on the iPad, if I still have my connection. So, um, so do maximum likelihood estimation with Poisson or with negative binomial or whatever, in the presence of changing exposure. Okay, so I'm gonna do it very general, maybe a bit beyond uh, the example mentioned in, in the book. So I'm gonna assume that I have a portfolio of policyholders labeled with or indexed with I running from one to N. So I can have 10,000 clients or I can have six observations like in the example in the book. And then for policyholder I, we have NI, which is the random variable that denotes the number of claims reported during a period, so it's the number of claims reported over a period of length EI. I 
And we call this EI, we call it the exposure or the exposure to, to risk, right? And typically in a motor insurance contract, this is going to be a number between zero and one. Because typically in the non-life business, you work from contract year to contract year. So here you're going to list the exposure as a number between zero and one, where one means that you were covered by this product during the full year, right? So NI is my random variable for the number of claims reported over a period of length EI and say KI is the observed claim count, right? So NI is for the random variable notation and KI is the actual outcome that I'm facing. And once again, if you report two claims over a period of one year, it's something different than when you would report two claims only over one month, for example. And that's exactly the correction that you want to build in, in your likelihood uh, model. So what we're going to do in the Poisson setting is, so in the Poisson model, we're going to model this Ni with a Poisson with as its parameter Ei times lambda. So the lambda now becomes my expected claim frequency if EI is equal to, to one. So we say that the lambda is then the expected annual claim frequency if we work in an exposure that is expressed as a fraction of a year and that is expressed in time units. Now, why can we do it like this? Well, that has to do with uh, the Poisson process uh, which would be underlying this, this model and which, which you could see here as somehow you would take an integral of a constant Poisson intensity and that integral would here go, let's say, from zero to EI, right? So what, what you see coming up here is, in fact, a sort of homogeneous Poisson intensity assumption that we're making and that we're, that we're then translating into this uh, into this proportionality uh, of exposure times the annual expected claim frequency. So if we have that, then we need to put the likelihood as a function of the unknown lambda. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the product over all observations in the sample, and we're going to work with this guy, because that is my Poisson likelihood, if I correct the expected value in the, um, if I correct the expected value in my Poisson model for, for exposure, okay? And then I could say, yeah, let's switch to the log likelihood. So that would give me the sum over all observations minus EI times lambda plus Ki times the logarithm of AI, EI plus Ki times the logarithm of lambda. Yeah, and then the other part with the K factorial that doesn't matter if I'm optimizing over the unknown lambda. Um, next thing to do is take the derivative. So look at the log of the likelihood, take the derivative with respect to lambda. And what you then find here is minus the sum over all observations, of the exposure of observation i, plus the sum over all i of these outcomes registered divided by lambda. Put that equal to zero, solve for the unknown lambda and what you'll then uh, what you'll then see is that the resulting lambda the resulting lambda would be the total number of claims registered some of the ki's divided by the total exposure in my portfolio so that is how i should adjust my maximum likelihood estimate in this poisson model if I'm facing a different exposure, or if I'm facing a varying exposure measure 
over my observations available in the sample. So also note that if each, obs each observation is observed during a full year in this case, then in the end, you would again have the maximum likelihood estimate for lambda as we introduced it before. Then it would just be the sample mean. Because then the sum of the exposure, if every exposure is equal to one, you'll just get n. And you just divide by n the total number of observations in the sample. But if the exposure is changing across the uh, policyholders in your sample, then you should take it into account with this particular uh, reason. Yeah, any questions on that? So this is something that you will see coming back a lot if you start working on uh, data science applications, building uh, regression models for, um, for insurance contracts, because very often there will be some kind of exposure measure uh, involved in your data, and you, you will have to take those exposures into, into account when building when building. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here. We took a bit more time to to discuss um, these frequentist frequentist estimations. Sorry, with discrete with discrete uh, models.